So welcome everyone to the second episode of the Questioning Podcast. I'm today joined by Juliano Calamari. Yeah. No, did I fuck that up? Oh no! Come, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, man. That's, I think that's a food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank uh, you. Caplani. Caplani. That's right. Cap. Caplani. Let me let me remember that. More Italian. Smart. Caplani. Cap, cap. Like a baseball cap. Caplani. Okay. Caplani. Got it. Okay. Sorry, man. My bad. My bad. Delete. Delete. Okay. <clears throat> I'll start. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Questioning Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Juliano Caplani. Boom. Nailed it. Boom. Got it. Uh, a, an owner of a speciality coffee shop. I got it again. And I was about to say expert of coffee, but you said what? Oh, well, man. Nobody's an expert. Anybody who claims to be an expert doesn't know anything. Anybody who claims to not know nothing probably knows a little bit about some you. That's what it says. You. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really excited, excited to be with you. Man, good to be with you, man. I miss your face. It's been a long time. I miss being here. Man, stop it. <laughs> we're actually, by the way, speaking of it, we're in Dublin, uh, close to SBG Ireland, where I trained, and I, that's kind of a short version of how we initially met. Uh, but there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about. Oh, man, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in front of a camera before. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just talking. <laughs> the cameras are not there. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so one thing, actually, the very first question, I just feel like asking. So do you question yourself? Well, every day. How every much? day. How does it work for you? Uh, well, you know, essentially, you know, when I embarked on this journey, you know, in the kind of adolescence of when I started, uh, to, to kind of wanting to open my own thing and do my own thing. I was like, you know, in the early stages, like, yeah, it's going to be great. Like, I'm going to do this and we're going to do that. And, you know, we're going to nail it. And, you know, high ambitions. And then to, to the point of, you know, where you're at this stage, you know, almost a year into your business, you wake up every day just going like, well, what am I going to do today? <laughs> like, am I ready for today? Like, are, are we going to nail it out of the park? You know, I always fucking uh, kind of step a little bit back, man. And, you know, you have a massive pressures to kind of like uh, go, go out there and do like 100 percent, man. Uh, and giving people that consistency every day. So you always you always question yourself every day if if you can do today the same as you did on day one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Something you mentioned already leads me to another question. And you know, I think so many people think about opening a restaurant or a cafe. It's like, it's kind of the old school dream. I think these days it's more like the younger generation. They're like more like YouTube. Yeah, they're like, yeah. I'm going to be an Instagram star or YouTuber. But I think our generation, including myself, I was like always like, oh, it would be so cool to have a cafe. I think everybody yeah. thinks of it and dreams yeah. of it. But, you know, either nobody does it. Or some people try, and a lot of, like, that's already a minority, but, but I think quite a few of them fail because it's just such a tough business yeah, from what I know. Yeah, yeah. But so far, you're making it work. So, so what, do you, but what do you think is the gap between where you start off with the idea of, oh, I, you mentioned, like, you, you, you want to have your own cafe, but what were the realities? What, what did you face where you're like, fuck, this is not as easy as I thought? Well, the, 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 the reality is, man, is more of behind the scenes of running a cafe, you know? Right. Like if you run a specialty coffee shop, you're more kind of like, I have to pay this person. You're now responsible for staff, yeah. you know? You're now responsible for, for taxes and VAT and, you know, you have to pay all these people, you know, your suppliers, you know? As in when you were, <clears throat> when I was working in a specialty coffee shop, I was, you know, tra -la -la, you know, oh, look, I made money. You know, I made people happy today. You know, mm -hmm. I can do this. Like, this is easy. Uh, but not seeing, you know, the other aspect of it. And the uh, funny story is that my boss, man, when I was working at the, the other cafe, because he, he knew before I entered this job that, you know, it would be my goal to open my own specialty right. coffee shop. And I wanted to kind of, you know, have an in-depth experience and work there, uh, which is very important in anything that you try to open, kind of work in that area. 
sure. to get a better understanding mm -hmm. of what's going to come to you. Yeah. Um, but every day he would laugh at me for wanting to open a coffee really? shop. Every day. Uh, but like, what, what <laughs> would, was like the source just, of that? He would just like walk past me, like whenever he kind of had like, you know, a bill to pay or he had something <laughs> from the government, he would walk past me, just fucking laugh and then, you know, walk away without saying anything. And I was like, what's this about? And he's like, oh, you'll know when you're open your coffee yeah, shop. Okay. Every fucking month I come in, you know, I would get like, <laughs> I would get a bill for this, this and that. And I would be like, oh, Jesus. And I would remember him just laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're an idiot for wanting to open this. But man, when you have passion, I think, you know, that's, that's the main key is when you open anything is if you don't have passion. And that's why people do fail, mm -hmm. you know, after six months or a year is because, you know, they weren't that passionate about it. They're so, so much into the idea that it would be really cool if I owned this. Yeah. You know, it would be awesome if I had this kind of, you know, mm -hmm. coffee shop or restaurant or or so on and so forth. But, you know, if they don't have the passion, they're just in it for more the stature. Mm -hmm. they, they will close down after six months. So this is a tough business. It's a very, mm -hmm. very difficult market to get into in any market. And if you don't have the passion to be, you know, the best in the business and mm -hmm. your mindset straight away is like, I'm going to make this, but I'm going to make it top of the line like mm -hmm. there's nobody that's going to be better than me you know if you don't have that passion going in 100 percent, you're going to fail 100 percent. but the thing is you are making it work i mean i come here from time to time it's booming with people we spoke about it that it is successful it is working it's tough work but it's working so what do you think makes it work for you you know i'm very lucky in a sense you know that i've had i've been in the speciality industry for about 10 years now, you know, I've met a lot of connections. Uh, I've met a lot of, you know, mentors that would kind of, you know, educate me on certain things that I wasn't aware of. And uh, I've built a lot of, you know, because the specialty community in Dublin, especially in Ireland, is very small. Everybody knows everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. So having, when I opened here, having all the baristas and you know coffee shop owners support and backing me and you know putting on their social media you know Juliano opened unfiltered and check it out best thing ever you know having their kind of support really you know grew my kind of reputation in the industry and uh, having you know certain type of people around me you know like barista uh, world cup barista champions uh daniel hobarb you know having uh arvind renata uh, uh the latte art champion and uh, of sorry latte art champion of uh, ireland and barista champion of ireland Wojtek as well works for bulis uh having these guys kind of you know you know guide me in a sense and kind of show me like you should step away from this or move towards that you know because i'm still you know they're they're you know 25 years 15 years into this kind of business so i kind of looked to them for a little bit of guidance as well and they directed me to the right right approach mm -hmm. uh, yeah but having that passion is is definitely the number one driving force like i knew when i opened this coffee shop i was set mindset was that what i saw the specialty coffee industry kind of in ireland was generating more You know, all, all anybody in Dublin that has a specialty coffee shop, they're not really baristas, mm. you know? Mm. They're not they're not their accountants or, you know, lawyers or they had a bit of money and they thought they could make more money by opening a specialty coffee shop. Mm. So that's what they did. Uh, you know, and other people that have a specialty coffee shop, either like their parents are, you know, backing them or they had money from their family. Like for me, it was, it was my money kind of in there. And I was like, I'm going to fucking make this work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I'm broke. You know, it was all I had. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, that passion to kind of be the number one in Dublin, you know, that's what's driving me to this day. Like I, I want to change the culture that they have here. I want to show that you shouldn't sacrifice quality of coffee just because you know if you buy it from another person cheaper you know you could get more money out of it like if this is your job like at the end of the day you know if this business fail i'm still a barista like i'm not going to be a lawyer or an accountant or a doctor i could you know but you know this is our profession at the end of the day you know so it's for me it's 100 it has to work like it has to work from day one day one running head start i'm like this this is going to be the shit. Do you know what i mean 
What I like about your approach a lot, and I think it's, it fits to the main, main keyword of the, the podcast that I'm building up, is that questioning that many people, they're like, I know the way and they set off to do it. And obviously you can't know and foresee everything. And then there's some failure and they're like, oh, so it didn't work out. And then I, I bail instead of, oh wait, okay, this didn't work out as I planned, but let's change it and let's question it. So, so what did I do wrong? What can I do better? What can I improve? Or even if things are great, I think that's, that's part of what I like about your approach as from all the times we, we, we spoke about everything. You're always like, it's, even if things are good, you're not like, oh, okay, perfect, let's chill. You're like, no, but how can I make it better? You're always doing that. And I think that's awesome. There's there a point, man, I, I don't think you were, you were back in Lithuania, but mm. uh, three weeks back, man, I almost closed the shop down. What? Man, I swear <laughs> to God, I was, I was in a mind state where uh, everything was going so good. Like I was, uh, everybody was loving what I was doing great, yeah. you know? But me personally, I felt, you know, really depressed, man. I was, I think, you know, in my kind of, I'm, I felt like I was conforming to some, to please everybody, mm. but not doing, you know, what, you really doing what I really, yeah, what my, what my, my motto was, what my agenda, you know, I felt like I was lacking in this, you know? This could have been due to the fact that I was working seven days a week, you know, <laughs> for, for the past That's seven funny, months, yeah. like in here every day. I, I didn't see it, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. So I took a step back and I was like, I need an outside perspective, right? right? So I hired a consultant, mm -hmm. uh, a world barista champion, Daniel Hobart. He was Is world, that? that was the guy who was here. Okay. Uh, so uh, Daniel came in and he worked here for two days, mm -hmm. right? Probably the worst two days he ever worked because there was elections going on here and there was two polls. So we were hammered, like we were extremely busy for two days. So, you know, but I wanted his opinion, you know, his expertise to see like where, what's stopping me from being great mm. or what's stopping me? Like, where did I hit that roadblock yeah. that I can't, why am I not happy with what I'm doing? Mm. So, you know, after, the two days he took, he took me aside, you know, at the end and he would consult me. He was like, you need to change this. You need to bring this to another level, you know. So after he left, we changed things. We changed the coffee. We had a higher quality of coffee. We're now rocking White Star up in Belfast. Uh, White Star? White Star, I think, was the Titanic. It was called White Star. Yeah, but like, I, I probably maybe lost you somewhere. So you're rocking White Star, meaning you're... The, that type of, is that a type of coffee? So White Star is, is, a, is a specialty uh, roaster mm. uh, up in Belfast. Oh, ah, okay. So okay. We, before we were doing Full Circle, uh, oh. Full Circle was great, uh, mm. nothing against the guys, but they were not, they were not that next level mm. of, in terms of what we wanted to achieve. Mm. So we switched to a more higher, mm. more higher product, you know, and we got exclusivity around Dublin, so mm. nobody's doing White Star in Dublin Shit. except me. You know, this was, you know, what, what we spoke with mm -hmm. the owner. Yeah. And uh, so we changed a bunch of things. Uh, like in the beginning, man, I was ready for, no, I don't like this type of coffee, which is very understandable because not... You mean when you made the change? Oh, when I made the change, it was horrible, man. Like when we changed, <laughs> <laughs> we changed from a Brazil, you know, a uh, uh, wash Brazil, you know, from chocolate, uh, chocolate uh, nutty kind of profile, dark chocolate nutty, uh, to uh, natural Nicaraguan, which was wild uh, strawberries, almond biscuits, like that's, you know, you know, for people that be coming here on the regular to kind of switch them over to, hey, you know what, smack in the face, here's some fruity coffee. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not I know everybody. Exactly what I mean. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So everybody was like, "Oh, the milk has gone off, or this coffee tastes bad. Maybe your beans have gone off." And you have to. But in this kind of business, in speciality, you have to kind of educate them. And you know, why we did that? You can't just be like, "Oh, that's what we do now." You know, you have to educate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some people might want it. Some people don't want it. So, but if the people do want it, they're like. Why did the coffee change? You educate them, we're doing this, we switch to a higher brand, so it, this is the kind of progression we're going to, you know, the, the, the price in the coffee changed, but my prices in selling it didn't. I want to keep that 
you know, low cost down so people can afford it and try new interesting coffee that they never had, you know, instead of charging six or seven euro for this coffee, you know, my price is very low. So people can come from everywhere around Dublin or Ireland and experience this new flavor that, you know, they haven't had experienced yeah. here. Yeah. So this was the whole goal. But the backlash was, you know, <laughs> so people not even be like, man, this coffee tastes like vomit. And you're like, one guy told me it tastes like uh, uh, vinegar because he wasn't so used to the acidity of yeah. this kind of coffee. He was always into that dark bean coffee, you know, so... You know, but he still comes in and drinks it. He's like, he said to me, well, I guess I have to get used to it. So, <laughs> you know, but you do get like, this is, this is one of the things if in your success, man, or in your kind of path, there will be, there will be times when you're feeling down or you want to change or, you know, you need outside perspective. And, you know, if you're continuing with the mindset, oh, it's going great, but you're not happy then there's no point to do it. For me, there was, I never, I'd rather close this down yeah. than not do what I set out to do in producing the best coffee in Ireland, you know? So if I conform to people just because, you know, they're happy with the way it is, but, you know, suffering in myself that I'm not happy because, you know, I'm not doing to the standard which I set out to do, mm. then there's no point in this business. Absolutely no point. I'd rather close it than conform. So I really resonate with what you're saying. I guess it's kind of a universal journey in that sense. Like, you know, some details about me trying to push through to the new direction, which is actually one of this, this podcast is one of the, the steps towards that. But I announced my big change and got a lot of backlash from it as well. And I, part of it, I admitted that, you know, it was my, my mistake. I, I, I maybe pushed it too, too much into forcing people. Like you said, uh, what, what I like about you said that, you can't just force people to be like, oh, this is like, it's going to be that way and that's it. My lesson that I learned was what, pretty much what you said. It's, you do have to kind of do your own thing, but you also need to include others and educate them. Yeah, and I really like exactly. that, that, what you said. And that's kind of what I'm doing or trying to do myself these days as well. It's like, instead of saying, this is how it's going to be, period, or coming back to just uh, doing things only what other people want, but it's like, okay, I'm going to do it my way, but let me explain to you why it's awesome. Exactly. And maybe somebody's going to like it, maybe somebody's not going to like it, but, but still. But, but in, in the end, of like, if people, the people that, you know, like and respect what you do, is the people, for me, it's the people that you want. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And the people that kind of don't understand, you know, why would you sacrifice customers or, mm. or, or followers uh, because you want to go this way and this mm. is the point where you kind of have to you know nobody likes to be educated you know especially you know in front of you know nobody wants to feel like a dumbass like mm. you know and explain to them why you're doing this uh, but but you gotta you gotta give some information to as why this would be better you know, and, and it, at the end of the day, if they don't respect your decision, you know, but they're not really, you know, the client tell that you kind of want mm -hmm. or, or, or necessarily, you know, if they don't, if you educate them and they're like, well, fuck this guy. And you're like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, thanks for coming the first time. And, you know, apparently this wasn't for you. And I respect that, you know, there's other places that might be. And I respect that too. Mm. Please come again and give us another, you know, shot, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna chase you. Mm. Like, it's not what I set out to do in this world, you know, I'm not gonna beg you to come here. If you want sure. to come here, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same nice. with your followers, if they respect, let's see, you know, where you're going and how you're progressing in life, if, if they don't really understand or, or if they don't get it and they want to move on, then, you know, Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Not bye, but, you know, I wish yeah, you come yeah. back, but, you know, kind of like, you know, it's your, choice, yeah. it's your choice. I respect you. You know, there's plenty of things out there. That's your interest and your taste, mm -hmm. you know, but this is the kind of approach I will be, you know, taking at this point. So yeah. this is for me, for me personally, it feels like what I want to do and what I want to achieve. And I can only do it through this way. Mm -hmm. You know, so you either let me be me or, you know, you go in, you know, other places. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm.
one more thing I wanted to ask is, initially I thought about asking you, imagining that you were working in a specialty coffee shop and you were thinking, why am I not doing my own thing? But it seems like you had that idea from early on. Mm. So my question then is, uh, how did the questioning process for you happen when you were working in a specialty coffee shop or plural? Mm. And then when was the moment where you decided that it's time? It's like, how, how did the questioning process go? Should I still work? Should I still get more experience? Should I still get more connections? Or is it time for me to start? Like, how did that happen? And when was the moment where you're like, fuck it, I'm ready? Yeah. <laughs> to, to be honest, man, it, it was a kind of a slow kind of journey to when I wanted to open. If you take kind of a step back to yeah. my beginning, right? Owning a specialty coffee shop was never in my, you know, okay. path. It was never what I wanted to do. Okay. It was not. It was not since I was, you know, little. I was like, you know, I'd be cool owning specialty coffee That's shop, and I'm going, I'm going to work towards that. No, man. I was, you know, I was. A, I'm a qualified scientist. Like I did, mm. you know, uh, uh, pharmaceutical science. And oh, funny story is how I ended up in coffee. Is uh, I failed my statistics <laughs> exam, you know, and I had to repeat the whole year. So I was like, okay, I have like a whole year to kill. Like I better get my ass a job. Mm -hmm. So I worked in a coffee shop in, in, in Nazo Street called Kilkenny Restaurant. Mm -hmm. There is where I learned, you know, espresso based drinks, you know, uh, espresso, latte, mm -hmm. macchiato, mm -hmm. americano, and all these kind of things. And then I got really into latte art. You know, doing a cool picture, having people come over and be like, oh, that's cool, take a picture, come back to meet me. It's like, that was beautiful coffee. That's when I kind of fell in love with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, but still, you know, it was not in my, you know, career path. Mm -hmm. But I could see when I was working in this kind of coffee shop, I could see like other, you know, uh, uh, my colleagues, this was their job. And I respected that, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is... You know, after this, like, they're not going to be anything. This is what, this is their career. Mm -hmm. They're baristas. Yeah, right. There's nothing else that they want to do. They love it. Yeah. Which for me was like, this is crazy. But <laughs> I, re I respected <laughs> that, like right? Because I, because in my mind, like, oh, after this, you know, I'm going to go, you know, finish my degree and then work in pharmaceutical industries. This was, you know, my kind of process. But I saw them and they had passion and dedication and they would, take care of everything, clean everything. And I was like, this is crazy, you know? But I worked in this place for about four years. Mm. And after I finished my bachelor's, I went to do uh, the higher diploma. So I did drug development in another place, in Sligo, another university. And then, uh, you know, I was still back and forth working part-time as a barista in this place. And then, you know, everything that we had in module or we had like, uh, 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 an exam or kind of a problem solving thing, I would always bring it back to a coffee shop kind of, you know, problem and how we fix that problem kind of situations. And, uh, you know, after I finished my, 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 yeah, after I finished my degree, I worked in industry and I was like, I hate this. I, I hate <laughs> everything about this. You know, I realized I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. You know, I love people. I like talking, you know, being in a laboratory, like isolated by yourself mm -hmm. for 10 hours, mm -hmm. working on a boring experiment every day, same experiment. You're like, this is, I don't want to run. I don't want to do this. I don't mm -hmm. want to be with people and have chats. And so, you know, uh, where I was working wasn't really more commercial coffee than specialty. So, but, you know, from working this place, I've got the experience of, you know, the basic, you know, latte art and, you know, what is uh, espresso. And I wanted to progress to more kind of, you know, independent coffee shop, specialty coffee mm -hmm. shop where they did higher quality of coffee, you know, different roasting techniques. And I really wanted to get into filter, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I was... Checking out, sitting down one day, and I saw this guy. He was, uh, uh, I think, was um, uh, Aeropress uh, champion, Ooh. and I was like, "That's dope. I want to, I want to learn how to do that." Yeah. So I found out where he works, and luckily they had uh, 
uh, opening, right? Mm-hmm. So I went in there and then, you know, talked with the manager and man, I was cocky. I was a cocky motherfucker, you know? <laughs> I, I went to, I went there and I was like, would like a job, you know? And he's like, do you have any experience? And I just, you know, throw him my phone and my Instagram was open and all the latte art I did. And he looked at the Instagram, he looked at me, he's like, can you work tomorrow? <laughs> Oh, nice. That's <laughs> and, uh, you know, that guy hated me for like a month because I was really cocky. Okay. The, the hired you? No, no, no. The, 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 the guy with the Aeropress, Martin, yeah. like, you know, he hated <laughs> me for a month. He thought I was just like a cocky asshole, you know, chatting to the women and, you know, having a good time, you know. <laughs> uh, but he was jealous. like, you know, he, I think not jealous, but he was kind of like, you need to kind of step back a little bit. Like, this is it's a professional environment. You need to, you know get back but I was always very loud and talkative so and you know I stepped back a little bit took some of his wisdom and then took other people's wisdom and then after that I was like I saw where the kind of you know the booming kind of aspect like you know from the 2007 to 2015 speciality was like wow 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 you know but then it diverged into you know uh, coffee shops becoming more cafes and they're more food oriented, you know, mm-hmm. and they're going more to that because they think they can make more money from food and leave the, you know, let the coffee side of it slip. Yeah. So I saw a lot of this and I was like, you know what? I can do it better. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do food. It's just going to be a coffee shop. Like mm-hmm. we're only going to do coffee. Yes maybe something that complements the coffee, but never is before the coffee. You know, some pastries that will complement the coffee, but never we have food and this, and maybe you'll get a coffee. You know, because everywhere I went in in specialty coffee shops, you'd see people eating brunch. Like brunch is a huge thing. You see people eating brunch and not have a coffee. And I was always confused, like why? Like, what's going on here? Like, mm. came here for coffee, this is a coffee shop. They're like, no, it's a cafe now. Mm. So I was like, fuck that. So we got like pretty, pretty, you know, you know, disheartened and I felt like, you know, sad and, you know, I saw, you know, my, my ex-bosses, I was like, look, man, we got to, we got to buy this coffee or let's try it. Let's try this one. And they're like, man, that's too expensive. No way. And I was like, oh, you're a coffee shop. Like, just give something different to the people. Like, you know, let them experience what real high quality coffee is. Mm. But they were like, no, you know, margins and this and that. And, you know, probably they were right, you know, now seeing like the, <laughs> <laughs> now being in business, I get what they were saying. But yeah. if I w- if I can't do that, if I can't buy like coffee, that's very expensive and, you know, have uh, uh, the people in Dublin try it. then you know, what's the point of me having this coffee shop? I want you to experience what high quality coffee is, what, you know. 90 plus coffee is what is whoosh whoosh what is you know geisha you know mm-hmm. people pay when you go to berlin germany you know n- 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 scandinavian countries they have like on top uh, filter coffee you know they have geisha that's 30 euro for one v60 and you know you don't see this here because you know people are you know they don't want to spend that money then who's who's gonna come to spend 30 euro on a coffee you know, like nobody's going to, okay, I will maybe, you know, once a week I will go, I will treat myself to 30 euro for a coffee, but who else, you know? But then in my opinion, you don't need that many people to have this kind of luxury. You need that one person who really likes coffee to be like, yeah, I want, give me that geisha. And you know, my face lights up, their face lights up. It's a beautiful moment we share together. It's an experience when you go to a coffee shop, but it's diverged. So that's why I thought, I could be that change to show the people, you know, that it's not about money. It's about experience and, you know, having a connection with people, which is one of, one of the, the main things that my boss used to give out to me is for talking to people too much. Do you know what I mean? So, but this is, you know, he didn't understand, like, man, you got you to gotta do your job and stop talking to people. But people were coming because yeah, I was exactly, talking right? to them, right? right, right. Uh, and, uh, you know, the moment where I was like, yeah, I got to get out of here and open my own coffee shop is I had a chat with this American guy after hours. He was waiting for his bus. Uh, it was a little bit late and I, you know, I closed. I said to him, you can chill out with me for a little bit. We talked and we talked about life. We talked about what he wants to do. I talked about what I want to do. And, you know, three weeks later, you know, he was in California and sent me a message. He was like, look, man, I had a lovely chat with you. Never forget. Learned a lot. You gave me something to think about. And, you know, that's when I knew. I was like, you know what, man? 
I want to open a coffee shop. Like this is, this is what, this is the real thing of a coffee shop. The experience, the emotions. You know, it's it's a central hub for people to come and chat. It's not just you sit down. Can I take your order? Sit the fuck down. You know, get the fuck out. You know, I have to have that connection with people because, you know, mm-hmm. like your job as a barista is is to make you know if you had a if you as a barista had a shit day you can never show it to a person because you don't want to you don't want to you know give these vibes to them like you want if if i had a bad day and the guy in front of me had a bad day like i would say something to cheer him up make his day better and so he's gone but i i still had like a bad day but i would never tell show him like you my day shit you know but i want you to go out in the world and have a positive experience because you had a positive experience here and then you're gonna go out, you're gonna have a good time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that person had a shit day at work and he came for a coffee and then I made him happy so he's going back to work like, fuck yeah, <laughs> I can take on this job, you know what I mean? So that's the whole you know, aspect of being a barista is so much more but connectivity with people is, is the main thing. It, mm-hmm. it has to be, yeah. I feel it. Do you feel it? Yes. Connection. It's like yeah, flying. Absolutely. No, that's why. <laughs> like when I look back. I was about to say something else, then I'll come back to it. But when I first came down here, I was uh, just started training at SBG Ireland. And uh, I was kind of not knowing anything around. And I didn't want to be at the gym at the moment. At that moment. And I was like, oh, I need to find a nice coffee shop. Because I do like spending time in a coffee shop. And I was walking around. And I was like, oh, well, this looks you know, interesting. This is good. It looks like quality and I came in and obviously there's no sign on your forehead I'm the owner but you know but I I came in and we started talking and and it took me like a few days I, I had a feeling like you might be the owner but it took me a few days to be like oh okay that's that like he's the owner but not that, that 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 matters but the fact that we spoke and and we're chilling and also too I was doing some computer work and at that moment I was kind of homeless <laughs> I was still waiting for someone to take me in and so I didn't really have much where to go. And the fact that you're like, oh, well, we're, we're closed, but you can still hang out and we talked and everything. The coffee absolutely made me come back. But that connection and that everything, that's, that's one of the reasons why I came back. And I still come back even when I visit Dublin. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, I need to come here. You know, it's like, it's not just because of the coffee. Well, the coffee is amazing. But, so but I, that's, I get you. That, that's, that's the whole, you know... It's one of the reasons why, exactly as you said, that I want to open my own coffee shop because I can do that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Nobody's but like other, other that, people, right? they don't really care, man. Other people, they care about money. Like, how can yeah. I make my money close at this time and, you know, bounce and go back and repeat it again and make my money? So after a while for them, it's like, you know, they lose the love or... If they had passion for coffee, they lose the passion, you know, because they see it now as a job, you know. For me, it's more, you know, I love what I do, man. I love, I love, you know, trying different origins, different varieties of coffee, explaining it to people, get them interested in what I'm trying to, to, to bring back to Ireland and get them hyped up like, wow, just what? What tastes like beer? <laughs> and then have them try it and then come back it's like that's the best fucking thing you've ever tried thank you so much and I'm like well, man I'm glad you enjoyed have that emotional connection with people even if they're here for a day if they live here permanently one dude came from Australia and he was like you know he came down he walked I think from uh, Dublin 1 walked down here because somebody told him about <laughs> Unfiltered and uh, he came down here and then you know, we had a V60 and then we were closed and then afterwards I was like Bro, what's your plan? He's like, nothing. I was like, you want to go get a kebab? So we, yeah. we went and got a kebab and picked up one bike. And it was, for him, it was kind of very, I don't know, this dude, like where he's taking me in his car. But, <laughs> you know, we went and chilled out, got a kebab. And then after he left, it's like the best time I've ever had in a coffee shop. You know what I mean? So it's this kind of connection, man. It's, it's really one of, one, of, one of the aspects that drives me, you know, trying, you know, very funky different coffees is, is the other aspect of it. But you know, and and kind of sharing that with people, but, you know, having that connection with people is definitely worth it, in my opinion. I agree. Like, if if it was just for the money, fuck it, I'll be a scientist. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Do you get me? Yeah. Cool. So we keep coming back to education, in terms of educating your, your, your customers, your audience. And you remind me of a quick story where years ago, 
a friend of mine from teenage years, he was one of the people to start the rap culture in Lithuania, or at least in the area where, where we were. And then we met, it was, it was really cool, but then we met a few years after and I was like, oh, how are you doing? How's it going? And, and she started complaining to me that, ah, you know, especially in the smaller city that we grew up in, she was like, ah, people don't really, people don't really need rap mm. around here. And uh, I was much more cocky as well <laughs> back in the day. Uh, and I still believe in what, what I said back then, maybe I'm just more humble about it, but my idea was, in my response to him, I said, it's not that they don't need rap, but they don't understand that they need it. Yeah. And your job is to explain to them why yeah. they need it. And now that I you know, have more wisdom and mat maturity, hopefully, uh, I understand that as we discussed, no, it's not for everyone, mm. but there still can be a high percentage of people who would appreciate it mm. if they would understand what, what, what the thing is about. And to quickly give an example, even myself, I was already interested in coffee before specifically coming to mm -hmm. Unfiltered, but I have to admit 100% that after you, you were like, oh, try this, try that, try that, and I tried it, and I was like, oh my god, this is awesome, and then I went back to Lithuania, Vilnius, which is a great city, there's, there's mm -hmm. quite a few good coffee shops that I'm already discovering, but then I go to the coffee shops, I'm like, so aside from that usual shit, what do you have? Like, where's the real shit? What do you have? And they're like, oh, we have the, you know, yeah. the Aeropress or this and that. I'm like, oh, and then I try it. Yeah. But I understand that a big part of why I'm trying it out and I love, I'm loving it is because you introduced me to, mm. to that and you showed it to me. I'm not, like, now I just can't get enough. Mm. But if you wouldn't have showed it to me, then it wouldn't happen. So I wouldn't understand that I'm missing it. Mm. Mm. So. Did you see the, how the barista light up when you told him what else you have? <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have so much. I have a lot. <laughs> they get so happy when you ask. That's me as well, man. I get like very passionate when somebody asks me, like especially, you know, what do you got that's weird? I'm like, oh, I like this. They ask oh, me, okay. what do you have that's, you know, I know, funky out of this world, right, kind yeah. of like that nobody's doing. And you're like, yeah. ooh, I, I know what you want. And I'm like, I got you, no worries, man. And, you know, and let them try. Uh, natural uh, Honduras with macerated process, you know, it will taste like an IPA, you know, okay. so it's very hoppy. Uh, so they have a taste of that and they were like, well, this is amazing. <laughs> I've <laughs> never had, you know, and I've had coffees as well. You know, some people would bring me coffees that, uh, you know, from one, one, one of the customers brought me a coffee from Japan, which was a very, very kind of slightly darker roast Nicaraguan. Mm. And then he was like, Bro, I don't know what to think about this coffee. I don't know if it's the best coffee I've ever had or uh -huh. the worst coffee I've <laughs> ever had. And I was like, let me give it a swing at it, you know. And I made a V60 for me and, and himself as well, you know. So we both kind of see if he, the, the guy in Japan brewed it the same way. Obviously, different water and, you know, uh, different things. But, yeah, I gave him my best shot here. And it's like, you know, uh, it was exactly like how he brewed it. We tried it and he asked me the question, what do you think? And I was like, man, I have no idea if this is the best coffee I've ever had <laughs> or the worst coffee I've ever had. But I was keep drinking it because I've never had this coffee before. For me, my brain could not comprehend like what's going on here. Do you like this? Do you not like this? Yeah. Why I can't stop drinking this? Do you know what I mean? So that's for me, it's amazing like to find this kind of, you know, different varieties of coffee and different origins and see how you know, unique roasters, roast their coffee as well, plays a big role in there, you know. Mm -hmm. So the roasters, like, huge, huge, huge role in, in how this coffee is going to come out to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, like, that, that moment when somebody's passionate about coffee, <laughs> it just sparks me up, man. You know, makes my day. But what's interesting, too, is that you're on a mission to do it, and I am 100% sure that you're successful in it, and the fact that you are not only like waiting for the people that are passionate to come in and say, oh, show me the, the funky stuff, but- But I but, like the people but, more that are not passionate, man. But that's what I kind of yeah, wanted to yeah. point out, that you are also kind of discovering that passion and lighting mm, it up mm, in other in people. In other people. That for me, it's, it's, there's been people who've never drank coffee that come here, right? Yeah. That never drank coffee, that suddenly, you know, you start them off small, you go, you know, a latte, have it more diluted with milk, 
but they've they started from not drinking coffee to drinking lattes to drinking you know cappuccinos right. mm -hmm. you're gonna bring them down to flat yeah, whites yeah, yeah. and then take that off try an espresso yeah. do you know what i mean and then switch them to filter mm -hmm. like this kind of process you know to kind of move people they were like I've never drank coffee before too, man. Every time I need your coffee. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a beautiful feeling as well, man. Like I'm, I'm more, I like, you know, I like hard, hard situations. And, you know, if somebody is interested in coffee, it's very easy to, to kind of like, you know, you be interested as well. And you're like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty easy. But sure. if somebody's kind of like, yeah, I don't like coffee. And you're like, Ooh, oh, come here. <laughs> Do you know what it's I mean? So hard, I like, yeah. I like the hard challenges. That that's also very satisfying, man. When you kind of convert somebody to speciality, it's, it's very satisfying, mm. very very satisfying. Yeah. Speaking of challenges, one more thing I wanted to make sure we we touch upon in the record on the record. Something we started talking right away off the record when we met today. It's about that challenge you're looking at right now and questioning about the next step. Mm. And basically, uh, it, you can talk about that on the record, mm -hmm. right? So. Describe the situation, it's about taking a bit of a step back as the constant face of the coffee shop, giving more uh, responsibility to others so you could expand and grow into other shit. So, so Bro, that's, that. that's the most difficult, like, you know, for me, that's as, as you know, as a business owner and, and, you know, as foremost a barista, you know, that's the most difficult part for me, man, to kind of step back and let, let, you know, your staff kind of take lead. Uh, cause I've been, you know, since like eight, eight months now, almost nine months in business and I haven't taken a day off, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you're so immersed in it and you have, you want everything to go right and you feel if you're not there something's gonna go wrong you know but then if you're working all the time i, I didn't realize that even i made mistakes you know mm. like i probably made more mistakes that i could have avoided right. if i had more time sure. off the business you know yeah, yeah. instead of like always being there and, and kind of like you know fuck, micromanaging everything like you know you 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 hire you know my staff are highly trained so they know what they're doing you know at some times they've even taught me some things i was like god damn <laughs> i was like i've been doing that wrong for 10 years and they were like what <laughs> you know so uh you know that's you know when you hire the right people you, you you feel you know more confident to step back but in saying that i haven't i haven't taken that step back yet so i'm in the process of you know Hiring uh, more kind of staff to in that you know that are immersed in this in this culture, immersed in this in this industry, that they're passionate what they do, you know. So you know, paying them the money that I think from that kind of expertise that they have that they deserve, and kind of step back and let them, you know, be 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 the face of the company, you know. Like at at the end of the day, like I've set up this business and it's of high quality and then the staff are high quality so they can manage by themselves it's not a difficult thing to do you know it's it's just you know it's not it's not a hype you're gonna lose a lot of money it's just you know they 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 don't need to be micromanaged they don't need to be here yeah. they know what they're doing they're highly trained they know what's going on but it's just a fear that i have that if i step back something will go wrong mm. do you know what i mean yeah but uh, in saying that, like, I, I, I've made so many mistakes not stepping back. You know, I'm so exhausted. <laughs> you know, sometimes I have to throw away shots because I've let it go over. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm out of it today. Like, I've, I need, like, two minutes and, like, sit down or, you know, kind of this situation. Like, I, I think, like, it, the, best, the best thing in a business would be, you know, you've made it to that point and you've achieved uh, 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 what you can from so, but if if you don't stick back, you can never reach that next level. You can never reach that next ambition or goal that you have. Because if you're here 24/7, you're blinded. You know what I mean? You're like a horse has these what's this thing? So he's only seeing like straight, oh, right? So, so I'm at the point in my kind of career that I need to step back and and reevaluate. You know 
how can we do things and go in other directions or you know improve on certain areas or you know maybe bring in certain equipment or you know what if i want to do roasting or what if i want to uh, open a school you know i want to train people on how and be the best um, you know uh, at their careers as they can in the barista uh, uh, in the barista careers so you know so I'm at the point where I am stepping back now. I will take three days off. You know, that's the step, three days, then four days, and then, you know, just work on busy periods and focus on other aspects. Mm -hmm. And how can I grow and improve and, you know, bring that next level of quality that nobody's doing in Dublin, you know? Yeah. But you have to step back. Make sure you step back. <laughs> 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 yeah. Absolutely. Boom. Before I lead up to the last question, uh, every time we talk, uh, you need, there's always some next big thing for me, yeah. which I, I like a lot that you have that mindset of always growing more. So, so to show that, do tell what's what's on your to do list. Like what's what's the big thing? I want to open in Japan. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. like 2021, man. I want to. There's this place in. Uh, no, I'm not throwing hate now. I'm not throwing hate, uh, but there's this place in Kyoto. It's <laughs> called uh, 100% Arabica. So, then, you know, the, the speciality in coffee scene in Japan is not, you know, it's not really, it's in the infancy stage, you know. But there's this dude that, you know, very dark roast, very, I'm not even going to say which shop it is, but uh, <laughs> uh, very dark roast, but beautiful latte art, right? Blah, blah, blah. It does the whole thing, <laughs> shebang, it's on point. The shop is like clean. It's very spotless and, you know, but I've, I waited in line for like 20, 25 minutes and then people in front of me, you know, they got the coffee, took a picture and threw that out because it was disgusting. You know, oh. I tasted it and I was like, this is really bad. It's very dark roast. It's Vietnamese coffee, you know, mm. it's really uh, bad, but it was packed. So my goal is to open beside that guy, ah. <laughs> just, just to piss him off. Uh, yeah, this is the plan, open in Japan. But also, man, what I want to do is I want to do uh, a sub-zero freezing of very expensive coffee. Mm. So I want to have a filter menu. Uh, so when you kind of get, uh, you, you, you weigh your grams, uh, uh, you vacuum seal it, right? So if you want to do a very expensive geisha or a, a whoosh whoosh or, or a Panamanian anything. And you know, it's, you know, per kilo would be like 400, 500 reaches up to, you know, 3000. So buy very expensive kilo of it, uh, weigh it out, uh, vacuum seal it and freeze it. So you'd have a filter menu that can run all year round. So you don't have to worry about, yeah. I've got to get rid of this coffee because before it goes bad. So, you know, so in that way you can keep very expensive coffee all year so people that do come once a month that are looking for this type of coffee bro you know where to come you go down some filtered you get some good stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. so this is the next kind of a phase uh, that we're gonna do uh there's other things man but that's kind of on the down low don't want to say too much on the other things but but Kyoto, for sure, 2021, I'm coming for you, dude. You know who you are. Uh, and uh, the sub-zero freezing, I think this is, this is a big step, man, in improving your filter game, 100%. Last question. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who does have that idea of, oh, I wish I would have a like, coffee shop or cafe or whatever, what would, what would you share with that guy? Let's see, you know, <clears throat> you sit down and he tells you that you're there's, looking at him. And there's two <clears throat> things, man. I would say, and I think this is one of the reasons why I kind of I could I can focus on 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 the quality of things without worrying about the price. Mm. Okay, do it while you're young, mm. man. Do it while you're young and you have no ties. You know, yeah. there's two two things for that. If you if you're you know, if you're kind of starting it at, you know, it's fair, you can start it at 50. You probably have more money than I did, you know, at you know, 30, 28, you know, so you, you could be financially good, you know, and you can, you know, run it. But when I started at 28, man, I had no mortgage, you know, no babies, no marriage, nobody, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of things on me that I need to pay, 
you know? So when I opened my business, it was, you know, all I had to pay was staff and rent, mm. electricity, suppliers. That's about it. I didn't have a mortgage. I was like, oh, we gotta make this much money today or else I'm screwed for the mortgage, you know? Mm. I didn't take a loan out. So this is one of the things when you start out young, you have that also very, you know, drive and ambition. You sleep like five hours, you'll be fine, you know? Because I've seen people who, who open a business at the, you know, 45s and they can't, you know, manage with the, the, the lifestyle of, you have to constantly be awake, mm -hmm. you know? That's where they're like, man, I need at least 13 hours sleep, you know? But when you're kind of young, you're like, sleep, what's that? Ah, man, <laughs> forget about sleep. Uh, so that's the first thing I would say, man, kind of save your money, opening at a young age, when, you know, but when you open at the young age, man, you have to have very good people behind you. You have to have mentors to kind of guide you because you don't know shit. Like to this day, I don't know anything. I always go <laughs> as I always go like, man, I, I just, I don't know anything as much as I, I could know. Mm -hmm. So I'm always willing to learn from other people and how their experiences, like if a roaster, how he's roasting, how can I, you know, improve my coffee by knowing how he roasts. You know, like how can I, sometimes, you know, there's a coffee, there's a defect in the bean, you know, and if you're not, if you haven't learned from the roaster, how you, do you know that defect? How can you describe to your roaster, oh bro, there was, you know, so and such and such a potato defect in this bean, it smells like, you know, really bad. So, you know, throughout my, my, my kind of career, like I've always learned from other people who had more experience in other things. You know, so it's good to have a good team on your back and you get that information. So uh, the third thing I would say before you kind of run into your, your dreams is, man, uh, make a plan. Like have a solid plan and have solid kind of money backing you. <laughs> One of the things that, that I kind of, you know, got lucky on was I didn't have a plan. Mm. I kind of like was, oh, look, man, here's the keys you opening next next month you know so i kind of like i had no plan i was like okay i have this much money how can i make it work mm -hmm. you know it's like in in the beginning on the first day i was you know i had like a thousand euro to my name on opening day you know i had a thousand euro and i was like well i'm screwed if this doesn't go well i have a thousand euro to pay everything at the end of the month so this business is not going to go well, <laughs> you know, I'm one month gone, you know, that's how long I lasted. Uh, but unfortunately, everybody was digging what I did. So, you know, it went well. But if I didn't, if I wasn't who I was and all the experience I had and, you know, it would have been really, really, really bad, you know. Uh, and the fourth thing is work. If you want to be, if you want to open a coffee shop, work in a coffee shop. You know, work two, three, four, six months, work a year in a coffee shop, because at the end of that year, I guarantee you, you will either know if you want to be, if you want to own a coffee shop or you don't, you just know, you know, if you want to, to run a restaurant, work in a restaurant. And I guarantee you after a year, you're going to be like, yeah, bad idea. <laughs> this is not what I thought it was, you know? So it's, it's really, 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 really good that you work in the area that you're trying to open really beneficial that's that's the biggest one for me you got to work in your area because everybody when i open they've seen the success and you know they come here and they're like how did you do it i want to do it i'm like you need to step back so work the, man go to a coffee yeah. shop work there for free for one month yeah. and then come back to me and tell me if you like it you know there's going to be people that really like this energy and there's people that's going to be like hated it i hated it i don't like people you know what i mean so how if you don't like people how can you open you know a coffee shop you know, that's the one that's the one thing you have to do is like people mm. so you know that's the biggest thing man work in what area that you want to open huge huge thing huge thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually that you said it when i look back i thought about youtube and i guess youtube is a bit a bit different to a degree it's a lot about trial and error. It's mm. kind of part of the game, but I guess it is everywhere. But, but when I look at my Aikido career, when I had the Aikido school, I lived in that Aikido school for three whole years. Mm. I mean, I trained in a different one for four years. I, I was instructing at both of them. And, and now, when, after what you said, I look back at it. When I started my own school, obviously there's a lot of things I had to learn as the guy, mm. but there was so much backing me up from the fact that I was 
a student, I was an instructor, I was helping out with the management, I was helping out with everything. I had a very successful school, and now that you said it, after you said it, probably a big part of it is because I... Oh, uh, 100%, because yeah. you were in that. You yeah. were in that, in that, uh, in that mentality, right. you know, you were from the get-go there. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you stayed there for two years, you were like, I like this, yeah. I want to continue it. Right. You know, and then you ran your school successfully because this was your passion back yeah. then, right? So, but if somebody is just has... It's a prestige to open, to own something, you know? It's not. It's, it's hard work, man. It's, <laughs> it's so much hard. I probably make less money than working in a coffee shop. Like, you know, you have to have that. Like, I knew that from the beginning. Like, you're not going to make nothing, you know? But if this is what your passion is, I was like, it doesn't matter money. It's not important to me. I want to do what I want to do. You know what I mean? And, you know, as long as I'm doing that, I can never fail. Even if I'm not making money, I was like, don't care quality of life this is my passion I want to do it but man if you go in it you know because it's stature or because in your mind this is going to make you big money yeah. forget about it don't do it man go for the passion man go for the love of it forget about the money money should be the last thing on your mind for people who are visiting Dublin or are in Dublin not yet Tokyo <laughs> couple years <laughs> But uh, starting with Dublin, how can they find you? Or even if they want to check you out online, so what's... what's right, we don't really, you know, at this point, we kind of, we went through word of mouth. Mm. You know, we, we don't really advertise as much as we should or, yeah. you know, spread the word there. But we kind of, we only have, uh, we have a Facebook page. I've, I'm never on it. People like what about Instagram, Instagram. Right? Instagram. Instagram is a big thing that we use, mm. uh, just Instagram. You know, usually people find us through that way or you know, a friend has told them about this place. Yeah. So it's mainly word of mouth or Instagram. Mm. If you guys on Instagram, on Filtered Coffee Co, look us up. Mm. Uh, and we funny. Are, what? <laughs> we funny on that. <laughs> we funny on Instagram. Very funny. What? Sometimes naked. <laughs> <laughs> what about... In Dublin itself? Uh, in in Dublin, Dublin, man, we are in, in Chicor, mm -hmm. so Dublin 8, so uh, 205B, Emmett Road, in Chicor, Dublin 8. It's a little bit outside of the city, but there's a lot of history in Chicor that people are not aware. There's the War Memorial Gardens just across, and there's a lot of uh, kind of, you know, the, 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 the core, you know, the, the real people are in Chicor, like they're... they're most humblest people you'll ever meet is one of the reasons because I grew up here and I was like you know this place was available I thought it was destiny that I opened here and you know, so far it's been amazing mm. Mm. it was boom. a pleasure boom thank you we are so white <laughs> <laughs> we're not cool you we're not cool <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs>